Now we're going to be moving into how to deal with the flexible opponent, okay? Now there are four levels that I like to utilize in defeating the flexible opponent. And I can guarantee that these will work on anybody. There is nobody that uh, will be too flexible for these techniques to work on. Now the first stage is simply pushing this grip as far as I possibly can up here, up, trying to get it under his armpit. Remembering that circle concept. I'm trying to continue drawing that circle. I'm not lifting him up off the floor at any stage. Okay? I'm just pushing his hand. It's super tight now. Only a small percentage of people will tap from this first stage, but some will. That's why we've reserved these three other stages. Now, in terms of tightening this up, it's a push from my body side arm, and it's a little rev from my uh, top side arm. So this is pushing and this is revving, okay? Making things tighter and tighter. If he hasn't tapped from here, I'm gonna have to make things, uh, I'm gonna have to make things worse for him. So I do that by switching my hips, okay? What does switching my hips do? It elevates his body off the ground, okay? I didn't have to force anything. I'm moving me. I'm not trying to move him. He will move as a consequence of me moving, okay? And because I've got shoulder control, it's an easy elevation. He just comes up with me. I'm not forcing anything, okay? What has this switch done? Well, level two has given me one, space, and two, increased range. I can now push his arm at, into a further, into a greater angle, okay? And I've got more space to do that. In level one, I'm limited by his, his, his bicep, okay? We're flat on the ground. I can't push his arm any further. When I switch, there comes that elevation. What do I have? More space. What, how do I finish? The same way as I was doing before. Little incremental pushes. Okay? Now, most people will tap from here. Okay? Probably about 75% of people because I've got quite a lot of space here. Okay? There's the tap. One more time. Pin the hand. Draw a circle. My arm moves out of the way in parallel with my opponent's body. It pushes his arm into a catch. I just tighten. No big movements. He doesn't tap. That's fine. I switch to level two. We've elevated him off the floor. I have space. I consume that space. Little pushes. Okay. And there's the tap. If he does not tap, we need to go on to stage three. Stage three is the movement part. This foot plants. It drives my right knee under his back towards his, this grip. And there's the tap. Okay, one more time. Stage one has not worked. I switch to stage two. Stage two has not worked. I post up this foot and I drive my knee underneath, getting the tap. Now, most people will tap from that. I'm talking 90. 90, 95% of people, okay? There are some people that won't, they're simply too flexible. And that is why I have reserved stage four as the single-handed Kimura. Okay, now stage four works like this. I'll switch to stage three. I've driven, but he still has not tapped. Now keep in mind how, how great my range is here. I can keep pushing his arm all the way to about, to about here. Okay, as far as my right arm can go, okay? Maybe a little bit shorter here, but it's restricted by that right arm. I'm pushing his arm, I'm pushing it in under him, but I can't go any further than this. Okay, so what do we do? We let go. We enter into the one-handed Kimura. What does that do? Well, look at this increase in range. I can keep taking his arm back until I'm touching his toes. So I don't know anybody, or at least I haven't come across anybody yet that can withstand the single-hand Kimura. Now, Entering into the one-handed Kimura works like this. Stage one, not enough. Stage two, not enough. Stage three, the movement, still not enough. Now, I can afford now to let go because he's in this, this fully trapped position here. Now keep in mind, I'll only let go once I know his arm is fully bent. Why? Because he's got no power from here. I'm holding him at the wrist. I'm not up here. And I'm, remember, I'm using my thumb. Okay? Now, 
Now that I'm here, I simply wave out like that. It's like this, this action. I'm trying to fully extend my arm, okay? It, they usually tap within the first little centimeter or two. So here, okay, one more time, here. So I've got all this movement to push his arm into. He's not gonna withstand that. Now, can he break out of the one-handed? Very, very difficult because we've got no power when our arm's like this. For that first little extension is very difficult. If I try and hold on to his arm when it's out here with one hand, there's no way, he'll break that every time. But if his hand is fully up under his armpit, you can hold anyone like this. They're not, they're not gonna be able to get out. Okay, so I'm here. I'm looking where I'm taking his arm, okay? I'm still trapping his right arm. I've not, I have not lost that at any stage. My other, hand, my other elbow likes to control the hip now. It's not dealing with this anymore. It's my left hand's job. This one's just controlling that hip. And that is the four stages of defeating the flexible opponent from side control. Now we're going to move into how to defeat the uh, stronger opponent.